Excellent. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Your Disabled Joy. My name is Nico Meyering, and I use he, him pronouns. For a visual description, I'm a white man with parted blonde hair, large blue and brown spectacles, and a black t-shirt with a rainbow colored uh, D20, 20 sided dice on it. I'm seated in front of two bookcases and a purple wall. And like about 20% of the US population, I'm disabled. Non-disabled people might see our lives and experiences as sad, pitiful, tragic, but I don't know. I've been disabled a pretty long time, guys, and I think there's also room for disabled joy. Our disability community has as many members, though, as it has opinions, which is why I've asked my friend Avi here with me today to talk about disabled joy. Avi, thank you for joining us. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. How are you doing? Hey, I can't complain. Or I could, but what good would it do? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Avi, can you share a joyful memory with me? It could have to do with your disability or your disability journey, or it could be totally separate. Uh, either is valid. Yeah, so um, <laughs> it's kind of silly, but I just got this little dinosaur tattoo a couple days ago. <laughs> uh, it's a little brachiosaurus. I've wanted pretty much this exact tattoo for a very long time. Okay. And it just so happened that a local tattoo apprentice was offering it as part of like a pre-drawn flash deal. And so I was like, screw it, I'm going to get the dinosaur. And so I did. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you are the only person that has to live in your body. So why not decorate as you see fit? Exactly. There we go. Look at that. How has your disability kind of intersected with how you can pursue your own joy and, and find that happiness in life? Yeah, so disability is complicated, right? And like, I, um, I have been disabled in some capacity for my entire life, but it wasn't until the last few years that I really started identifying as disabled um, as somebody who has ADHD and I'm autistic and um, I was also, I mean, I was living with carpal tunnel for a number of years. Um, it, it really colored how I experienced life and I didn't really realize it until my early twenties. Um, being disabled very strongly impacted how successful, successful quote unquote, um, I was in school. Um, I was always told, you know, like, I'm, you're very intelligent, but you just, your, your grades aren't showing that. Why is that? And I didn't have an explanation for that. I just knew that I had a hard time getting my work done. <laughs> um, and so th in that regard, being disabled has really impacted how, how able I was to achieve my goals. I really, um, I, I spent five years in working towards an undergraduate degree, and I never finished college, um, which has had a really huge impact uh, on my mental health. Uh, more recently, uh, I, you know, I got COVID in January, and I, uh, it was my first and only time having COVID, and I unfortunately was one of the people who developed long COVID, um, and that has thrown my life on a tailspin. It's just been a really tough five months now. Um, it's, I tested positive January 27th, so it was five months yesterday um, that I tested positive. And it, you know, in some ways, it's given me a new perspective on uh, life in general, but disability especially, obviously. Uh, and I, you know, that maybe that's just me trying to find the silver lining. But in that regard, I do, I, I appreciate it, you know, as much as you can appreciate something like that. Um, but it's really, it's really screwed me up. Um, it's been, it's been really hard just A, tolerating my symptoms, but B, navigating the world as somebody who is newly disabled in a way that I wasn't before. Um, and just navigating, you know, things like short-term disability and things like, you know, like suddenly having what feels like thousands of doctor's appointments a week and 
all of those sorts of things. Um, and it's been hard. <laughs> it's been hard. Um, but I, you know, I've, I've been just doing my best to still find joy in as many things as I possibly can, which is part of why I did get my goofy little dinosaur tattoo because you know, you you only live once and tomorrow is not guaranteed. So find joy today. Get your little dinosaur tattoo. <laughs> I love what you closed with there. Find joy today. Thank you so much for that. Of course. Yeah. So as, as you mentioned, you've been disabled since birth. And now you also have to navigate this new relationship with your body. And as humans, our relationship with our body is is really foundational. It's really bedrock to our identity and how we interact with the world. So I'm interested to hear your perspective on this next question, which is what one thing would you want the rest of the world, the general public, to know about disabled life and about disabled quality of life? That's a really great question um, yeah. that I, I'm going to, I'm going to step on a little soapbox here for a second. Please. Um, so as uh, as the United States at least has recently declared the public health emergency for COVID-19 over, um, one thing I would really like to share is A, that COVID's not over just because we're over it, and B, that you can become disabled from COVID any second just because just because our government has decided that COVID doesn't matter anymore. Um, it has affected my life in ways that I could not have possibly imagined just six, just six short months ago. Um, and I, one thing I would like the general public to know is that even if even if you never get COVID, which hopefully you don't, um, but even if you never get COVID or whatever, or even if you get COVID and you recover from it just fine, you don't know who you could possibly be spreading COVID to. And you don't know whose life you could be affecting from that. So in that regard, one thing I would like to, um, I would like the public to know is just please keep caring about COVID. Please keep wearing masks. Please keep social distancing. Please stay home if you're sick. Um, because my quality of life has been very, very greatly impacted by it. And I don't want that to happen to anybody else. Now, as far as, you know, disabled life, quality of life as a whole, um, I will step down off of my soapbox now. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, overall, I, you know, I, I'm 28 years old and the, the, the COVID part of my life is, you know, very recent, um, but I've been disabled, like I said, for a very long time. I, you know, my life is pretty decent. My life overall, I, as a neurodivergent person, I find joy in a lot of things. I, you know, have a lot of really varied interests. I have a lot of really just, I have a lot of things that bring me joy and being disabled is, does not have to be and is not necessarily a miserable existence, you know, like, um, and being disabled I, you know, as much as it can suck sometimes, I wouldn't have it any other way because it's it's very much shaped who I am as a person and I don't know who I would be if I wasn't me. So that's, that's about that. I think that's really valuable. Thank you so much, Avi. It's, it's very radical. I, I wanted to say difficult, but it's not. It's radical to promote things like care and compassion uh, especially when you're one of the only voices doing so. So I see you in that. Thank you. Of course. My last planned question is one that I ask all my interviewees, regardless of, of project. 
Is there a recent win that you're celebrating that you want to name that we might celebrate along with you? Or if not, what cool things are you involved in? Um, if you're open to connecting, where can people find you online? This is your chance to promote yourself, to brag, to you know, be your own cheerleader. So hop up again on that soapbox and <laughs> let's let's hear it. Absolutely. So uh, in terms of a recent win, it was actually kind of funny. About 45 minutes ago, um, I went into the grocery store without a mobility aid for the first time in five months. Um, it was because with with the long COVID, I have developed new vestibular issues. Um, uh, and while I don't feel very steady on my feet, but I've been in physical therapy for that for the past like month or so. Um, and for the first time, I didn't need my walker. I didn't need my cane. It was only for a very quick, just like pickup order. But I walked into the grocery store. I didn't need a motorized cart. I got my stuff and I left. And that is huge for me. So in terms of wins, that, that's the thing I'm wanting to celebrate today. Um, as far as uh, you know, projects I'm working on where people can find me online, um, I primarily, um, outside of Facebook, I exist on TikTok. Um, I have two different TikTok accounts. I have my personal one, which is at Scorpiarius, which is S-C-O-R-P-I-A-R-I-U-S. <laughs> I, I was like try, trying to picture that in my head and I was like struggling to spell, but I'm good. Um, and that's my personal account where I share a lot of things about, um, you know, my struggles as somebody with long COVID or um, just like navigating the world as a trans person as well. Um, my other TikTok account, which admittedly is not quite as active as I would like it to be, but uh, again, as somebody who is navigating a new chronic illness, fatigue being what it is, I, I make time for it when I can. Um, I am working on a project. Um, it's called Potter Mache. It's uh, Potter, you know, P O T T E R M A C H E. Um, where I am, again, as a trans person, I, I always really loved Harry Potter growing up. Um, and, you know, when, when J.K. Rowling outed herself as a turf, um, I was frightfully devastated. And I had this box set of Harry Potter books that I just didn't know what to do with. I didn't feel right throwing them out or otherwise, like, donating them, but I didn't really know what to do with them. And so what I decided to do is I am taking all of my Harry Potter books, I am like ripping them up and I am making the pages into paper mache sculptures. Um, and I'm just documenting that whole process on TikTok. Um, so that is that is where I can be found on the internet. That's a project I am working on. Um, yeah. Avi, thank you so much. I love how you advocate for yourself, even when it's hard. I love how you're getting those wins bit by bit, and I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right, audience, tune in next time, and remember, I'm rooting for you.